Hey guys, it's Keith. I wanted to spend a bit of time in this quick video talking about matrices in X schedule. Um, with uh, a matrix in X schedule, there's, there's really two types of matrices and you'll find the settings up here in the edit menu. You, you have the matrices themselves and you have virtual matrices. So let me start with virtual matrices first because they're an important concept if you've got something like a projector that you want to display uh, pixel data onto. Um, that's really the only reason why you need to create a virtual matrix. If you don't have a projector, then you don't need to define a virtual matrix. Or if you've got a projector and you're just showing video on it, you don't need to define a virtual matrix. A virtual matrix is where you've got something like a television or a projector, and you want to turn that into a matrix type element. Um, now, you can make it pretty much any size, but obviously you need to then feed it the channel data. And the bigger you make, it the more channel data that you have to feed it so generally speaking look I'd recommend you keep its resolution um, in both the horizontal and the vertical direction into the you know tens to hundreds or low hundreds of pixels you know maybe 200 300 maybe 400 at the maximum because every uh, you know for a hundred by hundred pixel matrix you think about it that's um, 100 by 100 is 10,000 pixels times 30 channels, sorry, three channels, which is you know 30,000 channels worth of data, and that's just 100 by 100. Once you make it to 200 by 200, that number quadruples to 120,000 channels. And so your FSCQ files get a lot larger, um, and you've got a lot more data that needs to be rendered and saved and moved around. So you probably don't want to make it too large. Uh, the virtual matrix is an output device. So it's just like a physical uh, prop that you've, um, you've built, like a, I don't know, a, a P10 panel or a pixel matrix or whatever else, which means you need to match your configuration in X lights to the way the virtual matrix expects it to be, not the other way around. You don't get to go into X lights, define your matrix however you want, and then come into X schedule and go through it and say, actually, this is how I want that matrix to look. Um, so to add one, it's really easy. You, you come in here, you can actually have multiple. If you've got multiple projectors, there's no reason why you can't add them. And you go and add one. You give it a name. I mean, to be honest, the, the name is really not that important. Um, and then you need to give it a height and a width. Now, let's imagine that uh, um, I've, I've actually created a matrix here in X lights, which was 50 by 100. So let's make it the same. It's 50 high and it's 100 wide. Okay. Um, and generally speaking, you wouldn't have it, um, uh, you'd have it not rotated. And the scaling quality, you can play with this, but uh, I generally think high looks best. And then you need to decide whereabouts in your x light setup you want it to pull the channel data from. Now, in my particular situation, my matrix here is starting on channel one, so this would be channel one. If this was starting on channel 20,000, then this would be 20,000, and that's where the virtual matrix is going to grab the data from. You would then have to position the window, so you would move this over onto your projector and you'd resize it and say, that's how big I want it to be. In this case, I'm on my laptop here, so I'm just gonna leave it here on the screen. And that's where it's gonna get displayed when the, the sequence runs. So yeah, if you've got it on a, on a, on a TV that you've put outside or an LCD panel you've put outside or you've got it on a projector, you size that up to fill the screen because you obviously want your matrix to, to fill the screen up. And that's it. The topmost window, look, you check that, that just forces it to not get overwritten by any other window that might randomly pop up on your machine, which you probably don't want it to do. And that's it for a virtual matrix. That's all you need to do. And, you know, for now, I could go into here and I could quickly uh, create a new sequence. Um, I can go and drop a I don't know, let's drop a butterfly on it because after all, that's all X lights does, isn't it? Um, and we'll quickly save that. We'll call that AAA just for the hell of it. And so we've got an FSCQ file. We'll come in here. We'll add a playlist. We'll add an FSCQ file. There it is there. We'll click OK. Oh, we can save it. 
And then if we come down here, sorry, if we click on that playlist, play it, there it is. Okay, and that's exactly as it looked um, in X lights. And of course the butterfly only paid for a period of time and then it goes black because I only put the butterfly on for a small part of the, the actual duration of the sequence. And so if that was on your panel or your projector, that would fill the screen up and it would look like that. Now, um, just quickly so that you get a feel for it. Um, uh, we haven't stopped it yet. We'll stop it, it goes away. Uh, if we go back into our virtual matrices, uh, you can change this scale in quality. Um, and you know, you choose the one that you like the best. You can see this one here doesn't really blend all the cells together. So you get the actual, the squareness um, of uh, the resolution because it's obviously a lot lower resolution than the screen is here. But it, it's your choice how you want it to appear. Now, the second type of matrix, you only, it has a different purpose and sometimes you want to define both of them and sometimes you only need to define one of them. If you just want to display some pixel data onto a projector or a screen, you only need a virtual matrix. You don't need a matrix. However, there's a couple of situations where you do want to define a matrix. matrix. Um, so one is if you want to play the Easter egg, uh, the game of Tetris that's built into X lights, you'll need a matrix because uh, X schedule needs to understand the nature of the prop that you want to display it on so that it knows how to draw the game onto that screen and defining a matrix actually helps X schedule understand how the, the screen's constructed. The second situation where you would want to define a matrix is where you were planning to use uh, the real-time rendering of text onto the matrix. So if you're planning on displaying the number of sleeps to Christmas and you want the scheduler to update that as, um, as your show plays, or if you want to um, you know, build some integration with a text service so that you can display um, text messages that you've received from people or something like that, you're gonna need to describe the matrix because X schedule's gonna need to understand how do I render text onto that particular element, whether it's a pixel matrix, a P10 matrix, or in this case, a, a virtual matrix. Um, the third situation where you might want to define a matrix, no one's done yet, but there is hidden away in the API set um, in X lights, a, um, a mechanism whereby an external program can actually write pixel data onto the screen in real time. And so if you are wanting to exploit that, well, you'll also need to define a matrix. Defining it's extremely trivial. You, you come in here, you, you add a matrix, and you need to describe it. So we give it a name. And I'm gonna map this to our virtual matrix that we just had. So remember, now a virtual matrix is always, the number of, um, the height of the matrix is always the number of strings, and the string length is always the, the width of the, the screen. The strands per string is always one. Um, remember that our matrix started on channel one, so that needs to match on channel one. And because it's a virtual matrix, it has to start in the top left, as would a P10 panel for that matter. Um, and you don't get to change this, you have to match this to the virtual matrix. Um, some people have tried to have a, a real matrix that they've built and they've wired it from bottom right or bottom left, et cetera, and then they decide, oh, I'm gonna throw a virtual matrix in there so I can see what it looks like on the screen. And you can, but you can't, it will invert it because the, the start position's in a different location. And obviously it's horizontal because the, the lines go across. Okay, there it is, it appeared. Sorry, my machine's running a little slow because the battery's about to run out. And now you could go in and do something like define a, um, a real-time text, which you can do in your sequence by um, editing an advanced playlist. Um, and you can come in here and add a text output. Uh, and there's other videos that I've made on that. And you can see here, it knows about that matrix that it can display the text on. So that's when you would go and define a, a matrix as opposed to a virtual matrix. And that's how a virtual matrix works. Now, I'm not gonna go in further into showing that. There are videos that I've made on putting text onto matrices. Uh, there's are videos that I've made that show you how to get the, um, uh, the Easter egg up and running. So I'm not gonna go back over those right now. I just wanna keep this short and sharp and help people understand if you're building a virtual matrix, this is how you go about doing it. 
and these are the situations where you might go uh, back behind the scenes and describe a matrix. One, uh, one final point, um, these matrices here don't have to be matrices. Uh, it's entirely valid to describe your tree as a matrix so that um, Xschedule can render text onto your tree in real time or can play um, uh, Tetris on your tree. Um, and so anything that turns into a, a matrix behind the scenes and trees do can be described this way and you just have to set those parameters accordingly. So I hope uh, that was helpful for those that are trying to set up virtual matrices. Thanks guys.